All right, we've got a big one on the hardwoods today. Thunder look to snap a three-game losing streak this afternoon against the Lakers. OKC's been outscored by 26 points in 93 minutes with Russ Westbrook, Paul George, and Mello on the floor together over that span against the Wizards, Nuggets, and Pelicans. Thunder haven't dropped four straight games since early November. And you'd look at the big three there. As I mentioned, they've been outscored by 26 points. Uh, had a huge loss on Thursday night against the Nuggets, who beat them on their home turf. And as I mentioned, the Thunder haven't dropped four straight games since early November. For more in this game, let's bring in our NBA countdowns, Jalen Rose. All right, Jalen. Despite a three-game losing streak, Thunder 22-11 and 11 after a pretty dreadful start. Can you describe what you've seen when the Thunder are at their best? When they're at their best, they're effective, they're efficient, getting up and down the floor. They do a really good job of getting stops defensively amongst the league leaders and steals. Paul George is on their team. Steven Adams does a terrific job of defending pick and rolls out on the floor and protecting the paint. But they're at their best when Russell Westbrook continues to attack. They had to establish a pecking order from earlier in the season where Russell was gonna be aggressive the entire game. But in half court sets, finding ways to get Paul George as well as Adams involved in particular. And then Carmelo Anthony, who in theory is his team's fourth best player, can now pick and choose his spots offensively. And when he gets going, then they've been an unbeatable force. But I'm glad you alluded to something. They lost to the Denver Nuggets. They got beat by the Denver Nuggets, I'm sorry, because the Nuggets were terrific at the end of the game. They actually lost to the Wizards, lost to the Pelicans, who are playing without All-Stars and John Wall and Boogie Cousins. All right, Jalen, I want to ask you about something that I'm not going to lie to you. Watching the Cavs game specifically stayed through halftime just because I wanted to see what you were going to say. And as we know, the result was them getting blown out at home by the Rockets. The players in Ty Lue questioning the team's effort, and we saw a lot of that. You watch the team. I heard what you said yesterday. What concerns you the most about Cleveland beginning of February? I need to be a local weather person <laughs> because usually at the beginning of a game, when you say somebody's going to get blown out, everybody get upset at you. Especially when you say they're going to lose by 15. Then when they lose by 32, they like, oh, he must be on to something. Here's what I've noticed. An iconic player in LeBron James who's been terrific at moments of, obviously, this season and throughout his entire career, doesn't enjoy playing with this basketball team. And in theory, it seems like they not only have quit on the organization, they didn't quit on the organization, they didn't quit on the coach, they've actually quit on LeBron James. It's almost like a head coach being somewhere way too long, the message falls on mute ears, and that's what I see from a basketball team that has gotten older overnight, an expensive roster, can't get timely stops when they need it, haven't replaced Kyrie Irving, who's going to be an all-NBA caliber player. This team has been in shambles recently. They need to make some sort of major move, not to win the championship, just to limp through the season, get to the playoffs, and hopefully infuse some new blood and try to win the East. Yeah, we've seen during their frustrations, Jalen, like at least at the very least, you're seeing like a very emotional LeBron. We didn't see <laughs> any of that last night at all. But that's not to take away from the fact that the Rockets had a really impressive game as well. Yeah, there was no defense on the Cavs side, but they did their thing. They pulled within two games of the Dubs in the West. You, when you watch the game, what stood out to you about how they dismantled Cleveland? The first thing I want to acknowledge is that the Houston Rockets are a legitimate threat to beat the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference. We know about James Harden, who was 1-4-11 yesterday. He's been terrific all year, my MVP. Chris Paul, who's been fantastic when he's in the lineup, not only scoring, shooting the three really well, getting other guys involved. Capella's finishing amongst the lead leaders in field goal percentage and dunks. Ryan Anderson, Eric Gordon wasn't playing yesterday, neither was Trevor Ariza. And all of a sudden, you have a team that can really beat you in multiple facets. And I also want to throw something out there for the NBA. This is a prime year to where, instead of taking the best eight teams from each conference, imagine if the NBA playoffs was one through 16 seeded. So therefore, if the best two teams ended up in the NBA finals this year, L, it would actually be the Rockets and the Golden State Warriors, not a Cavs team potentially that we're watching limp through the Eastern Conference regular season. I would love that. You could see maybe a Celtics team that looks like they're going to try to take command of the East. Toronto might sneak their way in there, but still, you'd have like three teams from the East and 13 teams from the West, so there'd be almost <laughs> no parity. That's just the way it is. That's the, listen. Things will never be the same. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Jalen Rose, we'll see you at 1.30 Eastern NBA Council.